Everyone wants to be able to swim longer without stopping and faster. Today, I'm going to share our top nine tips to improve your swim endurance. Right, today I'm going to be giving you nine tips to help improve your swim endurance. It's likely not all of them apply to you, but I'm pretty sure at least one of them will do. So stay tuned. But before we get to that, if you enjoy our videos here at GTN, then make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Right, here we go. Now, of course, breathing is naturally a lot harder in the water, but if you're not breathing well, then it may well be that that is causing the issue and not your endurance. Now, if you're not breathing well, then you're likely going to overload your body by a lack of oxygen or an increase in CO2, and that is going to cause you to want to and need to stop to rest. Now, if you can run or cycle for extended periods of time, but then in swimming, you're having to stop after 50, 100 or 150 meters, then it sounds like your issue is the breathing. Now we've actually got a video on our channel already that goes into depth about how to breathe while swimming and it runs through that step by step. But very briefly, you wanna make sure that you're fully exhaling under the water in time to then present your face to take a full and relaxed breath in and then also breathing regularly. This is actually kind of similar to the last one. It's not really an endurance issue. If your technique is poor, you're gonna to have to work harder to move yourself through the water and therefore you're gonna tire more easily and you're probably gonna to want to stop sooner. In fact, it's actually an endurance challenge that every swimmer faces, even the best swimmers in the world. And sadly, and fortunately, this is a lifelong journey. You never really ever get the perfect stroke. Even the best swimmer in the world has something they can always work on. Fortunately though, the improvement curve is actually quite steep initially. Even the smallest and minor changes in technique can see great gains in this ability to be able to swim further and for longer. Now, obviously we've got a lot of videos on our channel, so go check them out for tips on how to improve your technique. But if you're really serious about this or you're struggling to improve your technique, then I would seek advice from a knowledgeable swimmer or coach that is able to watch you swim and give you tips to work on. Now, it might seem quite overwhelming at first. There's lots of things that you need to fix with your stroke, but I would suggest just working on one or two things, and quite often they'll be the root cause to many others. Now, this is an important point, actually, when trying to work on and improve any aspect of your swimming it takes time to see improvements and it isn't always linear. In fact, sometimes you'll see dips in that and then suddenly you might see these big jumps in performance gains. Now, this is normal, but it's always worth reminding people and it can be incredibly frustrating when you're putting all this work in and just not getting those performance gains. So stick with it and be patient. Now, if you think the swimming equipment is cheating, well, it's time to let go of that notion. Swimming equipment such as pool boys, kickboards, fins, paddles, snorkels, are great for working on individual aspects of the stroke and also when you're starting to tire in certain areas. For example, it could be a good time to put a pool boy in when your legs are starting to tire towards the end of the session, hips and legs might be dropping, that's going to be affecting technique. By putting the pool boy in, you might be able to be able to swim for longer, for further and you're avoiding and forcing bad technique with those dropped hips and feet. So they have their place. They can be really good for actually helping to improve swim endurance. Just don't become too reliant on them. As a rough rule of thumb, I'd always say try and make sure you limit equipment use to half of the session at most. Vary your intensity, yeah. Swimming hard may mean that you're not able to actually swim as far as you did before, but there are great gains in actually improving your aerobic conditioning, your strength, which ultimately will mean that you're able to swim further in the long run. But equally, you need to make sure you're swimming easy as well. And this is actually where a lot of people go wrong. They jump in and they swim almost as hard as they can for as long as they can until they feel they have to stop. But actually, if you relax, ease this off even more, you'll be able to focus on things like your technique, your breathing, and as a result, should be able to swim even further before you need to stop. Now, actually, the ideal is actually trying to alternate these reps, getting in and doing a hard rep, followed by an easy rep, 
making sure that the hard is really hard and the easy is really easy. In fact, this sort of dynamic should be used in a lot of your sessions and not ever really having to just jump in and swim continuously until you have to stop. Right, so when the goal is to increase the distance that you can swim and improve your endurance, it can be tempting to jump in, swim as far as you can, and then just keep adding a little bit more to that. Now, actually, the more effective and efficient way of doing this is actually to break it into bite-sized and manageable chunks, which might sound counterintuitive, but the idea here is that by doing these bite-sized manageable chunks and then having some short recoveries after allowing you to recover, but not fully, with time, you can start adding reps to that. You can start reducing the recovery time and increasing the length of those reps. And by doing this, you're never really pushing yourself to full exhaustion. You're allowing your body time to adapt and you'll probably actually cover more distance in total in the long run. Now, actually, if you take Pro Traffics, for example, or an Ironman swim, they have to cover 3.8K. They won't be covering 3.8K continuously in their swim sessions prior to race. They will almost certainly be breaking that into bite-sized chunks too. Okay, probably the most important thing that you can do for improving your swim endurance is to swim consistently. Now this requires you swimming, I would suggest two to three times a week if possible, and rarely missing a session. Now if you are swimming two to three times a week for a couple of weeks, and then suddenly life gets in the way and you have to take a week or two off with no sessions, and then back to it. And then again, life gets in the way, you have to take time off again. You sadly are just not going to see the improvements you're looking for. If that is the case for you, then even if you just get in the pool for a quarter of your normal swim duration or length, that will be better than nothing and help with that consistency. And also, if you are struggling with perhaps getting run down or worn out, then again, consider reducing the length of some of those sessions or pre-planning every three to four weeks where you will skip a session just to absorb some of the work, recover, and then go again. Now understand that if you're not totally comfortable with freestyle and you're already trying to improve your endurance there, then it can be a bit daunting to start considering other strokes as well, particularly if you're a triathlete and you only need to really swim freestyle. But actually the benefits of swimming other strokes is huge. It can not only help with your strength, but also your feel for the water. Now, I'm not saying you have to suddenly start doing huge number of reps of different strokes. Even just doing a few lengths of backstroke or breaststroke can help massively, and even butterfly. But I understand that one might be a bit too far for a lot of people, myself included. It's quite a hard stroke to master. So even if you just wanted to do single arm butterfly, it'd be great for coordination, that feel for the water, and also get those core muscles working and the whole body engaged and working in one whilst you swim. Now strength and endurance might seem like opposite ends of the spectrum. And obviously today we're talking about swim endurance, but if we can improve our strength, it means that we're gonna be able to pull better and increase our propulsion through the water, therefore swim more efficiently. Also, obviously, by improving our strength, hopefully means we won't tire as quickly. And that's an important one because as we start to tire and muscles start to tire, our technique might start to fall apart. We start to compensate, we start to use different muscles, we start to change our technique. It all starts to fall apart and obviously we then start to swim inefficiently. And that may adjust and change how far that we can swim. So it is an important one for improving your swim endurance. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions on any of these, please drop them in the comment section down below. And if any of these tips actually help you with your swim endurance, then we'd love to hear from you. Also, let us know in the comment section down below. As always, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe.